Uh, again, we're happy to be back with you again on the air, and we give God all the glory and all the praise for this opportunity to be in the studio sharing with you the Word of God. I am Pastor Gregory White of the Lord's House of Prayer for All People. Our church is located at 9318 Southwestern Avenue. That is in Los Angeles, and that zip code is 90047. You can reach us by phone at 424-203-9651. Again, that phone number is 424-203-9651. God bless. Uh, we thank God for this time with you, and we do give honor to Dr. Thomas Blackwell, who is the CEO and the president of KTYM Broadcasting Network, for allowing us this opportunity to speak to you on today. And we also, as usual, give our Holy Ghost shout out to Pastor Charles Ashley. He is the pastor of the Perfect Peace Bible Church in Los Angeles. And that church is located at 11151-53 West Broadway in Los Angeles. And that zip code is 90061. We'd like to invite you to come out and fellowship with us at our church. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 on Sundays, and our 11 o'clock worship starts at 11 o'clock. We invite you to come out to share with us in the Word of God in a wonderful worship experience. If you're looking somewhere to praise and worship God and be blessed through the preaching and teaching of God's Word, come out, and we promise you that we will uh, bless you with our preaching and teaching and the teaching of the word of God will definitely change your life. Amen. So we're here today and we give thanks for another opportunity to be in your midst. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you all the glory, God, for this time together. And we ask as we come in that we just lift you up and give you reverence and adoration for who you are, for being God. Thank you for this journey on today. Thank you for keeping us up until right now, Father God. And then we do ask that you will forgive us of all of our sin, sins of omission, sins of commission. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Pray that you would touch us. You would anoint uh, us on tonight as we teach your word, Father God. Give us wisdom. Give us insight on the scriptures that the people might be blessed and you will receive the glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Tonight's teaching is going to come out of the gospel recorded by St. Mark, and we will be looking at chapter 4 and verses 23 through 32. We're going to read that in your hearing. St. Mark, if you have your Bible, you want to look read along with us, you may. St. Mark chapter 4, verse 23 through verses 32. We find these words recorded by the writer. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he saith unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you, that you might be given more. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And to he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And he saith, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed spring up, shall spring and grow up, and he knoweth not. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full ear of corn. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, 
which when it is so in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge unto the shadow of it. We want to talk to you and keep in mind how here when in hearing God's word, how you hear God's word, how you receive it, and how you act on it will actually determine your harvest. Your results will be measured by the attention that you give to the word of God. The measure of attention and honor you give it is the measure, the same measure that you give the word of God is the same measure of power and virtue and anointing that will come into your heart. And that will bring that same word to come to pass to change your life and your circumstances. The same amount that you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It is not necessarily the amount of God's word you hear that will determine your results. It depends on the revelation or understanding that you receive from the Word. Because you can read one chapter, or you can read the whole Bible, or you can read one verse. So the revelation and the understanding that we receive from the Word of God is going to be the important thing, not necessarily how much we read. Always read the Bible with the understanding when we read it, that God is speaking directly to you. When you read it, not only is he speaking to you, but he is saying to you and I that we must obey the word that we have heard. It is not only important how you hear, but it is very important what you hear. You cannot expect to grow in faith if you are listening to a lot of unbelief, doubt, and fear. You must be very careful. We have to be careful what we let into our heart. And as we mentioned last time, what we let into our heart through our eyes, through reading, through our ears, what we hear, and then into our heart. We have to be careful. Mark 4.25 says, <clears throat> Take heed what you hear, because he who has ears to hear, to him will more be given. And from him who has not will be taken away even that that he has. St. John 10.10, 10, Jesus talking, Jesus says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But he says, But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And that abundant life comes by and through the word of God. The thief who steals the word of God out of the heart of men and women is Satan. When we yield to his fear, doubt, and unbelief, and when we're not operating in love toward our brothers and sisters, then and operating in unforgiveness, those things will keep us from receiving the revelation of God's word. When we operate in fear, when we operate in doubt, when we operate in unbelief, when we operate in unforgiveness, those things hinder the revelation and the understanding of God's word because they are in the heart. And that's where the word of God is received and planted in our heart. So if the devil can steal the word of God out of you, he can, he can actually steal everything you have because faith comes by hearing the word of God. If we let Satan steal our faith, then we have actually lost our connection with God. If we lose our, because that's the way that God connects with us through our spirit, through faith, because he is a God of faith. 
Faith is the currency of heaven. And without faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please God. Always remember, my brothers, always remember, and sisters, remember this fact. Faith tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear, to fear tolerated, I'm sorry. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear tolerated is contamination to faith. Because fear is actually the connector to the enemy's kingdom. Faith in the when we put faith in the word of God, the reason we talk so much about faith, because when we act on faith and when we speak faith words, it is like planting seeds. Jesus compares the working of the kingdom of God to planting as a farmer planting seeds in the earth. When the seed is sown, he says the seed grows up. Notice he didn't say that it would occasionally grow up. He didn't say if it's God's will, it would grow up. He said it grows up, period, and it becomes greater than all the other herbs. We, something we have to understand about the faith economy and God's economy is not like our economy. Our economy is up one day and down the next. Level out one day and down the next. And up one day and down the next. God's economy of faith is not so. It is always the same and it always works perfectly. If the requirements of good earth, good seed, and good water are met, there will always be good growth from the seed and an abundant harvest. It's inevitable. So, if you and I are facing the need, if you have a need today, what do, what do you do? If you have a need, then plant a seed. If you have a need, plant a seed. The seed may take the form of, could be speaking over your life, the word of God or the promises of God over your life. It may be planting a seed of finances. It may be your time. Or a seed could be some other resource that you may have. But always remember, your seed never leaves your life. The seed that you plant never leaves your life. It just leaves your hand. But it doesn't leave your life. And when you plant it, it grows up and goes into your future. I'm going to say that again. Your seed never leaves your life. It leaves your hand. But it grows. And then it goes into your future. Spiritually, physically, and financially. And when God's word, which are God's promises, are seeded and rooted and planted in your heart. And when, you, when we begin to believe the word of God and receive it, and then speak it over our life. We have to first believe it, and then we have to receive it, and then we have to speak it in spite of the circumstances. And that's the part where we get kind of uh, caught up because as we speak the word of God, in most cases, if we are speaking God's promises, we're speaking it because of a need, whether financial or whether physical or whether social or whatever we need, we're speaking the promises of God, but the thing is, when, when we speak the promises of God, opposition, we're speaking it in the face of opposition. And so when you're speaking the word of God and desiring God to uh, be a God of his word, we're looking at mountains. And we're looking at things that are standing in the front of us that are saying not so. So as we begin to speak the word of God in spite of our circumstances, and that's not easy to do. If you have an affliction and you say, I believe God's word, that I'm already healed by his word because by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. <clears throat> and God says, I sent my word to heal my people. So the key is the word of God is going to heal us. The word of God is going to set us free. The word of God is going to bless us. But I have to receive it. I have to get it in my heart. And a lot of time we stop there. We go to church. 
We go to Bible study and even listen to this broadcast. We hear the word. Okay, pastor, I got it. Okay, I heard it. I got it. Faith come by hearing. Yeah, but faith also has to have works. You have to do something. Show me your faith. James says, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. So we have to do something. So uh, in speaking, I found it was one of the greatest works. So I can feed the poor, and I'll go visit the sick, and all of that is good. But can you speak to the mountain with the, with the understanding of God's word that the mountain shall obey you? But in actuality, when you speak to the mountain, when Jesus spoke to the fig tree and cursed the fig tree, the fig tree actually dried up from the roots the moment that he spoke to it. Because he spoke to it, he turned and walked away. He didn't stay there and look at it and try to figure out, was it drying up? He spoke the words, and then when they came back the next day, Peter says, Master, there, look at the fig tree. It's, it's withered. And so we have to have, we talked about last week, have faith in God. And that faith in God means have God's faith. But that faith in God, the God faith, is the faith that called those things not as though they were. So even though if I'm sick, I can speak the word of God over my life and believe that the word of God, I'm already healed. And that's not easy to do. Because when you speak it, the enemy is going to say, no, you're not healed. See, look at your body. Look how you feel. So, But the thing is, in speaking God's promises, we have to be consistent. And we have to know that God gave us the ability when he created us in his image and in his likeness, he created us to be able to speak faith words and, and be able to know that they're going to, his promises are going to accomplish those things that he's sending. But that comes from when we spend time with God and we spend time in the Word of God, then we begin to know God and know who He is and know that He is going to keep His Word. And so <clears throat> when we begin to speak the Word of God, it has to be in spite of what I see and what's going on around me because that's faith. So when we do that, His Word will surely accomplish what He has sent it to accomplish. And it'll accomplish it to His glory and to our blessedness. Okay, let's take a look at the word now. We're going to go to uh, chapter 4, verse 23. It says, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So it's if any man has ears. So that means everybody's not going to have ears to hear. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear what? Let him hear the word of faith. You have to have faith ears to be able to hear the word of God. So this we're going to look at. In hearing the word of God, there is a responsibility for the hearer. The hearer has a responsibility. So it says, if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. We're talking about having an ear to hear and spiritual recept receptiveness. Being able to have spiritual antennas, if you would, to be able to see because the word of faith which we preach, everybody's not going to receive it because it's a faith word. And everybody doesn't have faith ears to hear a faith word. So uh, there are responsibilities. And it says, and he said unto them, Jesus, take heed what you hear. Take heed. In other words, when he say take heed, it means listen, but it's, when he means listen to obey it. Whenever you see heed, that means God is saying you need to do what you're, what's being said. So he said, take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. I will be recompensed. So you need to have uh, spiritual ears to hear a spiritual word. It says, and unto you that hear shall more be given. So those that hear the word of faith and receive it, more faith will be given to those that hear it. So if I hear it, I have to uh, have some works behind it. And then when I hear it, and then my works are what? Then I speak the word of God after I hear the word of God. I speak the word of God, and what is that? When, when I speak the word of God, I'm speaking what the faith words that I've heard. And so if I have a need, or if I have a desire... I go into the Word of God and see what the Word of God says concerning my circumstance. And then I use my faith to speak the Word of God concerning. So all of that's work. 
You have to do something. Go in the Word of God and see what the Bible says on healing. Go in the Word of God and see what the Bible says on deliverance. Write it down. Go in the Word of God and see what the God what God says about financial prosperity or blessing. Write it down and then speak those things on a regular basis. Amen. So it says, And this shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Unto you that hear or that he it means what? Unto you that exercise their faith, more shall be given. For he, for he that hath, what? For he that hath or hath exercised the word of faith which has been preached or taught to him, for he that hath it has received it and has exercised it, to him shall be given. And to he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And we're going to look at that a little later. It says in 26, And he said, So is the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things, or God's way of being, or God's way of living, God's way of acting, God the character. So the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things, or the way God operates, is what? As if a man should cast seed into the ground. That's how the kingdom of God is. And it says, because, watch this, because the seed is secretly growing. And when we plant, when we speak the word of God over our life and over our circumstances, when we speak it, it's like planting it, like a farmer digging a hole and he put the seed in and he planted it. So the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like it's comparison to a person sowing seed into the ground. These are kingdom symbol tools. So it talks about after he puts it in the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and what? And the seed should spring up and grow up and he knoweth not how. That's how the kingdom of God is. It's the things that we speak and that we do. We don't see it right away, but when we speak it in faith, is happening in the faith realm. Have you ever prayed for something and prayed for something and prayed day and night and you prayed and prayed and then all of a sudden it showed up and it appeared? Well, actually, when you spoke it, you spoke it in the faith. It was in the faith realm. And the more you exercised your faith and the more you spoke it, it actually was done when you spoke it. But it took time to materialize. So it says here, it's man's ignorance to, to the spiritual kingdom. The secret things of the spiritual kingdom in the faith realm, man is ignorant to how they come from the faith realm into the natural realm. We don't know how they come. But the only thing we know, we plan it, and then we go to sleep and we wake up, and the sun rises and the sun set, and then the next thing we know, it spring forth and it grow and it grows. We don't know how. That's the same thing with our blessings of faith. We just do what God told us to do, be obedient. We hear the word of God. We speak the word of God. And then pretty soon, the blessings of God appear. These are, these are nature's mysteries. When we plant a seed in the ground, naturally, <clears throat> we plant it in the ground, and then it grows. We don't know how it grows. We go to sleep and wake up. Those of you that have ever planted corn or any type of fruit or potatoes or greens you plant it, you put the seed in the ground, but you don't know how it grows. You plant it, you water it, and then the next thing you know, it grows. It's, it's a secret to us because it germinates under the ground where we cannot see it. And when we speak the word of God, it is germinating in the faith realm where we cannot see it. So we have to, when we hear the word of God, we have to believe it. That's the biggest thing. We have to believe God's word and we have to receive it. And then because if you receive it, then you're going to speak it if you believe it. You're not going to speak something that you don't believe. If I tell you, meet me down at the corner in 20 minutes, I'm going to give you $500. You're going to go, tell Pastor White said he's going to give me $500. I'm going to meet him down there. You going? Yeah, I'm going to go. Because he's a man of his word, and I believe he's going to do what he said. So a lot of us, people have promised us things, and we act on it because we believe them. We can't believe God. So when we hear the word of God, our, we have to activate our we activate our faith. That's like you you uh, get a uh, car from Citibank, 
And they tell you, call this number and activate the card. You walking around with the card in your pocket, showing it to everybody. I got $2,500 city bank. Mess around, don't activate it, and then go swipe it. What you think going to happen? Nothing, because you didn't follow the directions and you didn't activate it. Okay, when we receive the word of God and we believe it, when we begin to speak it, we're activating our faith. Hallelujah. That's how you act. You have to believe it. Believe. By life, in the Greek, by life. So by my life, I'm going to show you what I believe. Amen. So if I believe God, I'm going to start acting like I'm healed even if I feel... Ooh, Jesus. I'm going to start acting like I'm healed even when I feel sick. I'm going to start acting like I'm blessed even when I'm not. I'm going to start acting like I already have the job even though... I, and see, we don't do that because we don't trust God. I know at the church where I pastor, I think I told the story before, church where I pastor, we, they wanted to move, so we prayed for God to move. I was only pastor about three months. Pastor, we want to move, we want to move. I said, okay, we're going to fast, we're going to pray. We fasted and prayed about three months, and then the Lord told me, tell the people we're going to move. And I said, where are we going? He said, don't worry about it, just tell the people what I told you. I said, no, I'm not going to do that because if it don't happen, see, if I'm doubting, if it don't happen, it's going to make me look bad. So he said, tell the people what I told you to tell them. We're moving. I said, no, you need to show me something. He said, I'm not showing you anything. I put you here. Tell the people what I told you. So to make a long story short, I told the people, and about 30 days later, the Lord blessed us with the place where we are now. But he told me, he said, first of all, your name is not on the line. My name is on the line. I'm God. So, But in order for me to tell the people that, I had to believe God, which means I had to have a relationship with him, and I had to know him, to know that I've seen him work in my life before, to be able to speak it. I have to have faith in God. You can't have faith in somebody, speak something, about somebody that you don't know, you have faith in them, and you don't really know them, or have an intimate relationship with them, to know that what they're telling you is true. So we have to get to know God. The way that we get to know God is through circumstances. So what you're going through right now is not an accident. It's on purpose. It's ordained for you to go through it. If it's hard, that's okay. If it's troubling, that's okay. If it's afflicting, that's okay. You don't think God know? about your trouble. You don't think God knows about your affliction? Of course he knows. Why come he don't move it? He is going to move it. Why don't you speak the word of God over your circumstance? And maybe that may speed it up. It may expedite it. Amen? So <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. So the spiritual immaturity, we don't understand how that how that comes to be because it's under the ground, unseen. By faith, when we plant, if it's physically planting greens, we plant it and we go out there and look two or three days a week. Okay, you go out there and look and you're looking for that blade to come up. <clears throat> if it's corn, you're looking for that blade to come up. You water it, you water it, and then you go look. And by faith, you're believing that in that, that that's of nature, that that's going to happen. We have faith in that process. So if we have faith in that, surely we can have faith in God. So it says, so the earth is bringing forth, bringing it forth of, it, of itself. We just plant it, and the earth bring it forth. So in the same way, when we speak the word of God, when we hear the word of God, and we receive it, and we speak it, it's being planted in our heart. Because your heart is actually, we're going to look at, if we have time, your heart is the soil. The word of God is the seed. When you plant the seed of the word of God and receive it in your heart, is the soil. Amen. We're going to move on to make sure we can get to that and explain it to you. It says, but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. And he said, one, two, shall we liken the kingdom of God, or what, what comparison shall we compare it? Now, I want to go back so we can make this a little bit clearer to you. We're going to go back to verse 14 and explain the seed 
and the soil. The exposition of the parable, the, the degrees of receptivity are receiving the word of God. It says, verse 14, the sower soweth the word. These are they, these, and these are they by the wayside. The word is sown. So the ones, the seed that is sown by the wayside, these are indifferent hearers. Now when the sower is sown, is Jesus is sown, or if you have a man or woman of God that's giving out the word of God, preaching the word of God, they are sowing like a sower sows seeds. They sow in seeds, and the ground is the heart of man. So here we see in this particular instance, they sow by the wayside. Let's like if you sow on, say if you dig a row and you plant in corn and you dig it, and then you go and you sow the seeds of you, sometimes we just pour them in. But if you just sow it, throw it, all of it is not going to go in the trench. Some of it is going to fall by the wayside. And that's why they're saying <clears throat> these are the indifferent hearers. And when watch this, it says, but when they have heard, when they, the indifferent hearers, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. As soon as they hear it, he come and taketh away the word out of their hearts. That's what we meant by Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, and very much so, the word of God after we have heard it, when we're indifferent. And later on, we're going to talk about what that indifferent, these different hearers mean. It says, and these, the second one, and these are they which are sown on stony ground. These are the emotional hearers. Amen. So that stony ground, <clears throat> that's like if you dig a trench and you're sowing, some fall on the wayside. Now just say, for instance, if I put some dirt on this table, or if I put some dirt on the concrete, now if the seed goes in the ground, it'll go down in the ground and germinates under the ground. But if some dirt, dirt is on the sidewalk, it may be enough dirt for the seed to germinate, and it'll look like it's coming up, but it's not going to come up because the root is going to go to the, into the concrete. It's stony. It's hard. So it's going to look like it's going to come up, but it's not. What's that? That's people that are emotional. They hear the word, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They run around the church. Oh, thank you. Fall on the ground, roll on the ground. Emotion. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm saying sometimes when people do that, that does not mean that they have it. Not in all cases. Because some I know my mentor told me when you see people shouting, he said that don't necessarily mean that they're shouting because they're happy. He said, sometimes it's a protest shout. The Holy Spirit is on them and they oh, oh Jesus. Oh. They protest and they're fighting against the spirit. But anyway, that's a sermon for another day. But these are emotional hearers who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. I got it. But they have no root in them. And so endure, but for a little while. I got it. I got it. I got it. They're in the church. The next thing you look up, what happened to brother so-and-so and sister? I don't know. They left. I thought they were so on fire for the Lord. Emotional hearers. Watch. Afterward, when affliction and persecution arise for the word's sake, they immediately get offended. Check them out and see. They're emotional. They're emotional. They don't, they're shallow. They don't have any depth. And persecution, when, they, when your life is tested, you say, I got the word. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. I got it. And then as soon as persecution, people start persecuting you, or affliction come, then they backslide. They fall out and drop out of the church, and they don't want, they, you know, what happened to them? They was emotional, but they didn't have any root. That's why we have to stay. The answer is not running from the church every time something happened. And that's what people, I don't get it. Pastor say something, I'm leaving. This don't go right, I'm leaving. That's not the answer is not leaving. You're emotional. You're in your emotion. And these are they. Now, first you got the indifferent ears. This is by the wayside. And these are the emotional ears. That's the stony hearted people. They got stony heart. They didn't get it. And these are they which are sown among thorns, as here the word. And what's that mean? If you, if you sow where weeds and thorns are, it's not going to grow. Why? They heard it, 
But they are these are worldly hearers. They hear it, but what happened? The cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches. People in church, the minute God bless them, they gone. The minute they get a car, they get a job. They, I'm a pastor, I'm a tithe. God, I'm a blessed the church, or whatever the case may be. And riches, there's nothing wrong with being rich, but you have to be careful because riches have peril and riches are deceitful. And a lot of times, that's why God does not bless us to be rich and wealthy. Because as soon as he do, we're not coming back. And God already know that. That's why he don't do it. Amen, somebody. The worldly hearers are the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other stuff. Bling, bling, and I got that. I got my house. I ain't going back to church. And those things enter in and choke the word, and they become unfruitful. These are the different degrees of receptiveness. The here, indifferent here, emotional here, now the worldly hearers. It says, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Now we got the good ground. These are the receptive hearers, <clears throat> where results are demanded. When we hear the word, God demands results and effort from us. Spiritual hearing. It says, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and then bring forth fruit. What? Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. They heard it, and then they brought forth fruit. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. They heard it, and they did something with it. They heard it, and they began to produce fruit. So when we hear the word, we receive the word. So what is the fruit? The fruit of it is going to be my life. My life is going to be the fruit. Amen. So when we so we have we see the different degrees of receiving the word. We have the emotional hearers. So we have to figure which one are we. We have the emotional here. We have the indifferent here. We have the worldly here. And then we have the receptive here. And it says, He said unto them, as a candle brought to be put under a bush or under a bed or a light. No, it is meant to be on a candlestick. If you have a, a light, like these lights are in the room, you're not going to light the light and then put it under the bed. No. <clears throat> and that is when, when we hear the word and when we don't speak it and when we don't share it, then we are secret disciples. We don't want to be a secret disciple. We want the faith to come by hearing, hearing by the word. Once we hear the word, we, we are God demands effort and he demands us to work he demands us to be what he calls us and commands us after we hear the word faith come by hearing hearing by the word of god then god demands works with my faith not only should i speak it but while i'm speaking it the reason a lot of people don't speak it is because you have to live it I can sit here all day and tell you what this says and preach all oh, Pastor White, that was good. You did a good job, Pastor White, that was good. But what about when I leave out of here? And my Pastor White when I leave out. I know some people tell me, I don't know how you pastor. Uh, uh, I'm about 10 minutes from the church where I pastor in the city of Los Angeles, right by 94 from Western. I don't know how you do it. How you do it, Pastor? How I do what? How you live right around the people that you pass. It's not hard to do. You just have to live right. I'm moving out here. Go ahead and move. But God see you out there. See, my thing is, as long as I'm right with God, I don't have to worry too much. I'm not worried about people if I'm right with God. Because people are going to persecute you because they persecuted Jesus. People are going to lie on you because they lied on Jesus. And the Bible says the preacher, the pastor, is supposed to be blameless. What does that mean? It doesn't say he's supposed to be sinless. But some stuff you're not supposed to do as a pastor and as a child of God. You're not supposed to be out in the world doing what the world do. Blameless. What that mean? That means don't be guilty of what they're blaming you of because they're going to blame you of something. But when we hear the word of God and we receive the word of God, 
in order to speak the word of God, we have to be living right. We have to live holy. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. I said it, live holy. What that mean? I mean live sinless? I don't mean live sinless. It means, because watch this, I'm going to show you something. I keep saying that. It doesn't mean sinless, but we're not supposed to be of the world. What it means is holiness means consecrated. It means separated for God's use. It's like when you go in church, if the organ is in there and you take that organ out and take it to the club and then bring it back, it's not holy. It's supposed to stay there because it's for God's use and it's consecrated. And that's what we are, men and women of God and sons and daughters of the Most High God. We're supposed to be, he said, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. So being holy, for me to be holy in God's eyesight is not the same as God's holy. It is God's holiness because we have the Holy Spirit. So now I have everything I need to live a holy life. I'm just sinning because that's what I want to do. But I have the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Christ, that I've already overcome the world. So I have everything in me to help me live separate. We can't hang out with people we used to, do what they do, doing they can't do that and say you're a child of God. Because we are to be salt and light in the world. Salt, what's salt for? Back before they had refrigerators, they used salt to preserve. Everything you eat, just about now, got salt in it, has salt in it. Some stuff be eight, nine hundred, twelve hundred sodium. Why is that? Because you got stuff that's packaged, salt preserves it and makes it keep from going bad. So that's the Christians in the world, the, the, the remnant of the Christians in the world that are praying right now is the only thing that's keeping the Antichrist from appearing in the world right now. Because the salt is here, and he cannot come because we are here. So not only are we to be salt, we are, to, we are preserving this very foundation of the world that we know it, because we are here. And not only in the preservation point, but we are to be salty Christians. What that mean? When you take salt, when you put salt on your food, you're looking forward to change the taste. Amen? Y'all salt eaters. I try not to eat it, but I still do sometimes. But I'm getting there. But when you put salt, it's zesty. And it, if you continue to shake salt on your food and it doesn't change the taste, the Matthew 5, it says the salt is good for nothing and is to be cast out or thrown away and trodden under the foot of men if it loses its Savior. So we are all talking about faith, hearing the Word of God, and obeying the Word of God and speaking the Word of God. If I'm not doing that, then... If I do that, then I can be salt. If I live like God tells me to live, then I can influence somebody to come to Christ. If I'm living the way I'm supposed to, speaking the word of God, and then when you do that, people are going to see the word of God changing your life because it's going to change you. If you, if you be obedient to have hear the word of God, believe it, receive it, speak, speak it, and then believe it by life, God demands us to be obedient, to obey the word of God. Once you do that, then your influence, salt, changes stuff that you put it on. So a Christian, when a Christian come in the room, they are not see you as the same as everybody in the room that's unsaved. When you walk in, they go, oh, put that up, here he come. Oh, no, we ain't going to do that while he here. No, don't do that. Wait till he leave. Sometimes it still may, but but we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be separate. What makes us separate? By hearing the word of God, believing. The, so you have to be careful what you're hearing, though. Every preacher that opens his mouth is not preaching and teaching the word of God. And everybody that's standing in the pulpit is not supposed to be up there. So you have to get in the word of God so you can know, so God can reveal himself to you, so you can know God's voice when you hear it. Faith words, the word of faith which we preach. So we, we are to be, once we hear the word of God, see the word of God, we plant seeds, not only in other people's lives. Let me give you an example. I'm speaking the word of God, and I'm planting seeds in the hearts of those of you that are listening. But I'm also planting seeds in my heart. 
because I'm listening. So this broadcast is helping me. Because faith comes by hearing. It doesn't make any difference who's speaking it. That's why you have to speak it over your own life so you can hear it, so you can be changed. If you speak it and believe it and obey it and live right, then what's live right? You know what right is, right? Yeah, you know what right. You know right and wrong. You have a moral compass inside you. You know what's wrong and what's right. Just do what's right. That's all. And as us having the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to live right. So when we do that, when we hear the word of God, we believe it. We have to believe it, my brothers and sisters. You can't doubt God. Can't see him. But when, when you got saved, he didn't come down here and say, okay, I'm God, I'm saving I'm Jesus, I'm saving you. He didn't show you anything. And some of us didn't feel anything. We just took him at his word and believed that we saved. And we believe that we're on our way to heaven. I believe it. I know I'm going. I know I'm going. You know why I know I'm going? Look, George just gave me a, a revelation. You know why I'm going to heaven? Because heaven is in me. Right now, heaven, that's my ticket. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. That's a little piece of heaven. Ephesians said it's the, it's the, it's the guarantee or it's the down payment of my salvation. See, God said he guarantees us heaven. You're going to go, you accept Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. Can you give me a guarantee? He said, yeah, I'm going to give you my spirit. That's, ooh, Jesus. That's the down payment on heaven. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I know I'm right. So it says, for there is nothing hid which shall not be made manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. So those secret things in the faith realm, those secret things of the revelations of God, they don't have to, to stay secretly. But God wants to reveal those things to us. Okay, let's go back to where we left off in verse. But I wanted to explain that to you about the different hearers, about the different degrees of receptivity, the indifferent hearers, emotional hearers, worldly hearers, and uh, the receptive hearers. We go to verse 28. It says, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full ear of corn. This is the natural, the natural harvest when the fruit is brought forth, immediately you put in the sickle because the harvest has come. And this is where we left off in verse 30, the parable of the mustard seed. It says, and he said, Warren too shall we liken the kingdom of God. Or what or with what comparison shall we compare it? With what will you compare God, the kingdom of God? And we said the kingdom of God. Is the kingdom, kingdom of God is love, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the kingdom of God is. But the kingdom is God's kingdom and it's God's way, how, how God operates. And when you and when you operate how God operates, then you're operating in the kingdom realm. The kingdom of God is the realm of God, the rule of God, and the reign of God is the kingdom. So it is a kingdom where he rules, and there's a kingdom where he reigns, and there is a kingdom in his in the realm of God. And so how do we how do we become part of that kingdom? We become kingdom citizens when we accept Jesus Christ. And when we're born again, we're born into the family of Jesus Christ, the family of God, and then we are born into the kingdom of God. And we are citizens of heaven. Even though we're on earth. Amen. That's not like that. That's good. We're citizens of heaven right now. Because the Bible says uh, the head, Jesus, is seated on the right hand of, of God. And it says, in Ephesians, it says that we are right now seated in heavenly places. You don't believe it? Wherever your head is, I guarantee that's where your body is. So wherever Jesus is, as far as God is concerned, spiritually speaking, we are already there. Because you have to remember, God is eternal. He's not in time and space. So God is already past the end of the world. Satan is already in God's mind. Every, all of this is already taking place. It's already done, and we are already seated in heaven. So we have to still go through those stages to get to where we need to go. But is where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? What is like it? What is it like? Uh, how God operates? What is that like? 
with what comparison will we compare it? Uh, what kingdom similar to? What can we compare it to? He said, it is like a grain of mustard seed. How many of you ever seen a mustard seed? Our country people know what it is. Some city people ain't never seen a mustard seed before. Mustard seed is about as big. If you take a straight pin, what you take out of a garment, it's about as big as the head on a straight pin, or about that size or smaller. It, so it's, it's like a grain of a mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. It's a weak instrument. Muscle, the mustard seed is the smallest seed it is. But watch this. It's the smallest seed it is, right? Right. Okay, but God says, if you have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and say, be moved and it shall obey you. Now, we all know where the mountain is. You go out where the mountains are. If you go up north and go toward where the mountains are, you see them when you start getting up toward Big Bear and all that stuff, right? So just imagine, you go up to Big Bear to where a mountain is, and you take a mustard seed the size of a pinhead. That's the kingdom similitude. That's what the kingdom of God is like. That's in you. If you're born again, that kingdom is in you. So it says you can, you can take that mustard seed faith and use it and plant it. But it said you have to sow it. You have to plant it. It says, it is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, when you sow it, as long as it's in your hand, this is how are you going to get, you can't get a harvest. How are you going to get some corn and you got the corn seed in your hand, walking around with it in your pocket? God is saying, plant the seed. You want a harvest? You have a need? Plant the seed. You have a need? Plant the seed. But it has to be a seed of faith. And it can't be doubt can be connected to it. Unbelief can't be connected to it. Unforgiveness won't forgive people. You got people you holding grudges, not forgiving. You can listen to all this all day. It's not going to work for you. We got it. Have to be based, operated by love based. We have to forgive people. That's one of the. I did it. It ain't working. Are you harboring grudges in your heart? Working unforgiveness. Are you loving people that do you wrong? All that plays a part. That plays a big part. And I watch this. So it's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown. When you sow it, when you put it in the ground, it's less than the seeds of all earth. God have given to every man the measure of faith. Everybody have a measure of faith. Everybody have, because God, it's not fair for God to tell you to use faith, and he didn't give you any to use. So you have the faith, but the comparison of the kingdom, the kingdom similar to the kingdom is compared to a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed it is, period. God uses that. Because he knows you you can relate to that. You don't have to have big faith like T.D. Jakes and all. You don't have to have that. <clears throat> but he started with the same faith you have. Everybody started with the same measure of faith. But you have to cultivate it. You have to build it. So the kingdom similitude or similarity is to a mustard seed. Isn't that something? The smallest thing it is. God said, if you, so if you have a seed of faith of a mustard seed, and you compare that mustard seed to Mount Baldy or whatever the Mount Everest, and you can use have that much faith and speak to a problem that's big as a mountain. Once you speak, you're sowing it, you're planting it. Once you speak, you're sowing it. And he said, if you speak, it'll obey you and it will move. So if, if I can speak to a mountain and have it move with mustard seed faith, and if it's not working, how much faith do I really have? Do I have even that much? I have it, but I'm not activating it. I'm not planning it. I'm not doing what God said. Love people. Don't harbor unforgiveness in your heart. Be obedient. Hear the word. Believe it. Receive it. Act on it as if it's already done. When you do that, God is going to honor it. It says, but when it is sown, when you plant it, it groweth up. Greater than all the herbs, the growth of the kingdom, the kingdom, kingdom growth. When you plant it and you sow it, it's going to grow up greater than any, anything else, greater than all the other herbs. The little mustard seed <clears throat> grows up greater than all the other herbs and shooteth out great branches. 
the mustard, the little tiny mustard seed, big as a pinhead. That's all the faith that you need to, for God to say that you can move whatever's in your way. The sickness that's like a mountain, the doctor telling you you ain't going to live. The problem, you're about to lose your house and lose your job and your family and your marriage. That's, that's a mountain because it's something that you can't move. And it's something that's so great, you don't know what you're going to do. But God is saying all you need is mustard seed faith. But you have to sow it. You have to plant it. You have to act on it. You have to start speaking those things. It's not as though they are. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I'm going to live. I'm not going to die. Amen. I'm going to be blessed. I'm not cursed. I'm going to be well. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be sane. So we have to plant the seed. It says, and, and shoot out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So when we do that, that means when, when we plant the seed, it grows up, shoots out great branches, and then the birds come and lodge under it. That's what I mean. When you use your faith, that must have seen faith, and you believe it, you receive it, and you speak it, those things is not as though they were, as though they already are, in the midst of, but you have to continue to do it, continue to say it, continue to speak it day in, day out. Because it says, it says it, when, when he plants a seed, he should sleep and rise day and night. He don't know how it's going. He up day and night, day and night. So you have to speak it day and night, day and night. You have to believe it day and night, day and night. You have to receive it. You have to keep doing it and keep doing it. We don't know how it's going to happen. But we just are consistent and we're faithful to it. Amen. And God is faithful to his word. And so when you do that, somebody else is going to be blessed by your seed that you planted. See, the fowls come lodge under it and they're blessed and get shade under that. So when you be obedient to God and you do what the word says do, you are going to be a blessing to your family, to your spouse, to your children, to your grandchildren, the people on your job are going to be blessed because of your faith. Somebody may be watching the broadcast tonight. You may not even be saved. You may not have never asked Jesus to come into your heart to save you. If you haven't did that, then I'm sorry, but you're on your way to hell. Ain't but two places you can go, heaven or hell. Jesus died that you might have life. And today is not a coincidence. Today is your day to get saved. We're going to pray this prayer with you. I want you to pray it. I want you to believe it. I want you to speak it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you allowed this broadcast just so I can become to know you, Lord, as Savior. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he came down. They crucified him on the cross, and he died for my sin. I believe I'm a sinner, and I can't get saved without your son, Jesus. I believe he is your son. I believe he died. They crucified him. Father, I believe you raised him up the third day with all power in his hand. I believe he's coming back just for me. And now I'm saved and nothing the devil can do about it. If you pray, pray that prayer, we believe we just got saved. Amen. Call somebody and tell them. Call me. Amen. 424-203-9651. The Lord House of Prayer for All People. 9318 Southwestern. Come out and worship the Lord with us. We have a wonderful worship experience. Come out and pray and break bread and get in the word of God and watch God turn your life around through our life-changing Bible teaching and preaching. I guarantee you'll be blessed and your life will never be the same. Amen. God is able to thank uh, Dr. Blackwell and God bless you. We love you for this time. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to coming back sharing the word of God with you again. And I had a marvelous time, hallelujah, and I really enjoyed these broadcasts. I'm being blessed, and we pray and hope that something is being said that will bless you and that will turn your life around, that will give God the glory and you get the blessing. Amen. That is our time. I believe our time is about up. We love you. We thank and praise God for you. Until next time. Yes, it do. Oh.